What's up, guys? It's the. What? Why is it making that noise? Oh, that's my speaker. It's Ray Chaos Astrology, Miss Nostradamus, and uh, essentially, I was I was uh, doing uh, an overall analysis of a, a recent nutritional conference that just happened over the weekend. Uh, it would be through the second to the fourth of uh of yeah of March. And it's called a uh, low carb breck, and it's primarily uh, you know an advocacy for um, you know uh, an alternative, actual, uh, more Hippocrates or Socrates sort of approach to uh, let food be thy medicine. Uh, it, as much as it wasn't directly in that kind of context, it's essentially the um, astral, astral sociological uh, you know synchronistic uh, transit. In energy going on, and I initially kind of rambled, but you know it is spicy season, and the double-edged sword with that, I come up with the best intuitive ideas because I have Pisces, you know, near the uh, the midhaven. But I also uh, ramble and ramble and ramble, and I can't stand it, and I'm trying to keep everything uh, minimal. But uh, and of course, me going completely against what I was intending to do, um, I started. Relis uh, I started reviewing, listening to again, uh, the 20 minutes that I was talking or whatever, and decided I should just uh, actually instead of cutting and hacking that up because the audio quality. Some people have you know complained that they can't hear me well on some recordings. I don't know what it is, but um, yeah, there's stuff like stuck in the speaker to my BlackBerry, and that's why I record a lot of my my uh, audio clips or video on. And despite my efforts, I haven't been able to actually you know fix that, so that's why. And so the quality wasn't great, and I was man meandering. So I decided I would kind of write this, write some of this out, and it escalated into. <laughs> I mean, I already know um, this is actually kind of why I'm talking about this. Um, but obviously, as a spiritual counselor, um, you know, an oracle, someone who you know is essentially aligned with the galactic center and has a kashic, you know, um, insight, and um, an old soul kind of thing. Um, I obviously can see beyond the mundane kind of events and, and you know motives and trends, and be able to explain to people uh, what that's actually going on on a collective level or spiritual level or just in general like a synchronistic historical level of humanity. So I'm just gonna read from start to finish. This was supposed to be just kind of <laughs> paraphrasing um, some of the actual content from the uh, conference itself. For people who can't attend, I don't know if you can still buy it or not. For but for people who can't attend, they do offer. Um, yeah, I'm I'm sure you could probably still buy it. Um, because it's still available all the way through March. That uh, you can see it online internationally through live stream or through videos on their website. Which I guess since I'm being thorough, I'll tell you about it. So it's um. Denver's, uh, dietdoctor.com slash low, and and uh. Uh, whatever, not an underscore, but a, a hyphen. Carb, another hyphen. Breck, B R E K, another hyphen. 2018, or just you know, you can even look up low carb Breck as an hashtag, I guess, and look into that as well. This is their third year doing this, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna read my paper now, so I stop meandering. So, low carb Breck nutritional conference was in Breckenridge, Colorado, from March 2nd to 4th, 2018. It's the third year, so it's a mutable year movement. So obviously this happened at the end of Virgo uh, being in Jupiter, and the Virgo-Jupiter opposition um, with Neptune and Pisces was a huge significance with um, getting involved globally with certain coalitions, and then obviously Virgo has to do with nutrition overall and health. So an astro-sociological manifestation of the Jupiter, Virgo, Neptune, and uh, Pisces opposition, and the Uranus-Pluto-Jupiter T-square, so remember when Jupiter was in Libra following Virgo, the T-square reactivated the Uranus-Pluto square alignments. Uh, as well as when Saturn went into Sagittarius, that happened in 2015 till just it changed in December of 2017 to Capricorn. So you notice that these are all tran um, generational, generational and astro sociological transits that were all simultaneously going on, and they all fed into this kind of uh, um, you know theme of this uh, conference and everything. So um, the during that time frame, obviously Uranus being in Aries w was trining to Saturn and Sagittarius. Saturn and Sagittarius, or Sagittarius in general, has to do with knowledge, higher learning, that sort of thing, and wisdom acquired, or, you know, the discernment sort of thing. 
and uh, it's usually uh, attributed to higher education. Hence, there's been a huge uh, this trying to Uranus too has been there's been huge uh, what the fucks going on on college campuses all over the place, and there being you know some sort of you know voice or uh, revolutionary kind. Of, Everybody should be able to go to college. We should do blah 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 and that sort of thing. Um, Saturn uh, is the structure of all things, especially like the public or you know the aspiration or legacy of humanity. And Sagittarius having to do with knowledge. Uh, this would be restructuring or um, re um, re uh, inventing or uh, um, establishing education or knowledge to people. So it doesn't have to be like on an like an actual academic university level, it would be teaching people things that they don't know, or you know, making it like an actual staple or something that would be known to everyday persons. And so, uh, in the present moment, uh, as of late 2017 into 2018, Jupiter and Scorpio, which happened October 11th, 2017, has forced the collective to acknowledge the eighth house themes, challenges that can be summed up as secrets, toxic motives, corporatism, sociological repercussions of greed power and control from organizations, corporations, and the government supported faculties that influence, create, and even conspire with the modern health and medical industry. Because the eighth house has to do with disease. It's the repercussions of Venus and Taurus, which represents the economy and money and resources. So it's the collective. So instead of like an individual like me having five bucks, if there were other people in the room and everybody had five bucks and there say there was like four other people then there would be collectively in the eighth house twenty bucks but we just still have five bucks so that's how you look at that it's the collective uh, effort resources and uh... yeah obviously um, the eighth house isn't directly contributed to um, you know your daily health or anything like that or, or that sort of thing but it is the future repercussions of your um, your pre predispositions and environmental limitations and that sort of thing, nutrition specifically, and any of the lack of environmental, you know, um, healthy or supportive environmental factors that then cause you to be unstable uh, as an individual. And so, also, greed, power, and control are things that are associated with Pluto, 8th house stuff, cor Scorpio. Organizations, corporations, um, plutocracy actually is about corporatism and the, the collective wealth. So that's what I'm talking about with that. So when I said organizations, that's primarily like to do with lobbyists or, you know, Wall Street, things like that. So, and then obviously, um, if you're thinking about disease and corporatism, well, di center of disease control, you know, the actual corporatism of metal, mod modern medical industry, and that's where I derive that from, by the way. Just trying to give anybody a breakdown that may be new to, um, you know, uh, the concepts of, you know, uh, actually calculating in the systems of astrology, because primarily um, there there will obviously will be some of my fan base or my audience that is thorough with my work and thorough with astrology and terminology that will be watching this, but I, I actually hope that I could, um, you know, uh, actually present this to some of the people that are, uh, you know, support, support systems of this conference and, and those alike as it continues to grow. So, Fast forward to December 2017, not too long ago, Saturn and Black Moon Lilith. Black Moon Lilith is obviously the dark side of the moon, and it's a fictitious midpoint in astrology. There, there's all kinds of points. It'll confuse the hell out of you if you ever look at a chart. I'll probably show one just for shits and giggles, like I'll make an actual chart of this of this actual conference starting. So time out. And while I'm at that, I actually graphed out the charts. I graphed out a couple of the charts, just because I might as well just expose it all at once, and it'll definitely demonstrate what I'm talking about confusing. And it'll also, for anybody who is thorough with reading charts, or if they want to learn, they'll see all of the charts that entail the themes that I'm deriving for this actual conference. So there will be uh, an equal house, which is like medieval or ancient Greece, that would be the kind of astrology that Plato and uh, Pythagoras would use. And then I'm going to show Placidius, which is what the modern astrologers use today. And then there's the solar sign, which is supposed to be... Uh, Instead of looking at the actual moment that this uh, event transpired, we're looking at this as if it were an actual conscious entity or living thing, and that's the solar sign thing. And you look at that like as a, a as an individual and what um, influences the individual through all the houses. And then I'll show uh, a dual chart. It's the same thing side by side of 
the solar sign and the placidius one that it shows you again the identity of of the actual conference as a you know a collective uh voice which is what the solar sign would be and then the actual uh transit and current influences of the planet alignments when it was going on And uh, you, you'll see what I mean. And there's a reason why I'm thoroughly explaining all this because of this. <laughs> but uh, so Saturn and Black Moon Lilith entered Capricorn, the sign of Capricorn, in December 2017, joining the sociological influences inciting revolutions, which is Pluto and Capricorn squaring Uranus and Aries, uh, transforming traditions, that's Pluto and Capricorn, because uh, Capricorn is Saturn traditions and Pluto is destruction, transformation, or an annihilation of. Uh, of whatever it, it's associated with and dismantling destructive facets of collective secular society so Uranus, Eris, Uranus obviously is an Aries and it's a, a planet but Eris is another um, actually that's a dwarf planet it's not it's not a midpoint it's a dwarf planet um, it they're both in Aries in conjunct so they're um, within close proximity and this is the prominent driving force of um, Chiron and Pisces wounded healer martyr spirits so Chiron if you know anything about Greek mythology Charon the the one who basically uh, leads the the forsaken souls across the way the waves to Hades and etc cetera, etc cetera. and you're supposed to pay the ferryman Chiron or whatever like that it's essentially um, supposed to be one that teaches you things and, and in astrology it actually manifests more as like um, an insightful, um, a wisdom sort of thing. Because think about it, if we were going to, you know, kind of do a montage of that and, and think that out. If you were going to have a conversation with the essentially the the ferryman that that helps to take people from this world and lead them, you know, into the spirit world, they would obviously have a lot of insight as to the um, the downfall, the ramifications, or you know. The, the things that people probably could have done differently to not end up where they were. So that's supposed to be a sort of psychic insight or intuitive insight. And primarily those who have those sorts of insights are typically like wounded healers. Like uh, Chiron Pisces or Chiron in general would a great allegory for that or um, personification for that would be Jesus in general, the character Jesus. So um, so Chiron and Pisces, so the, the prominent driving force of the Chiron Pisces wounded healing martyr spirit is that Uranus and Eris conjunction that's now manifesting as tangible acts of change, uh, of change uh, and changing the premeditated Ponzi schemes to create cash cows out of misinformed naive populations that's primarily because um, I actually didn't write that down I started like going on a tangent because I started to get angry in my head about this uh, I get really worked up about it, <laughs> but uh, specifically Pallas, which is another um, midpoint or an asteroid that um, is basically the the wild child of, of Zeus or, or Jupiter, and she basically she's the self righteous one that that if you you know she's all over the place and she's like how dare you how dare you how dare you and usually um. If you don't listen to her and you don't heed her advice or you don't, um, you know, in, involve her, uh, then she'll basically call her daddy Zeus down on you, and, which is God, the gods, and unleash all kinds of hell on you, and she'll just make your life a living hell 
or you know cause triangulation more or less uh, like and I'm talking about on an allegory or, or metaphorical level until she actually sees the vigilante justice or the justice she's looking for and Pallas has recently gone into Taurus which again is the opposite of the plutocracy in, in Pluto and Capricorn right and Taurus specifically because of the time and the seasons of the year that it's in that's primarily when right after spring when uh, you're supposed to be planting all your crops and when agriculture starts to become abundant when calves and and all kinds of you know livestock and everything are born and that sort of thing we have more of um, sunlight which is the life giver that sort of thing so she's going to be fighting for essentially all of that 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 entails um, life quality of life nutrition the sources of where we get those things um, the overall well-being and the abominations that have basically stunted or uh, sabotage the efforts in order for people to do so. So that was what I kind of started going on about how the um, it's now manifesting as tangible acts of changing the hidden premeditated Ponzi schemes. I have I I have <laughs> a significant palace uh, influence on my chart by the way. If that doesn't if that's not evident by the way I wrote this uh, Ponzi schemes to create cash cows out of misinformed naive population. Yeah. Oh, I, I wrote the wrong number on which one of these papers. Uh, who has clearly forgotten the lessons of our countries, and when I'm talking about countries, I mean the United States founders, that do not enable overreaching governments and always question their actions, their, uh, uh, the actions of their uh, A very costly and traumatizing Pluto return. So Pluto takes 249 years to go through all 12 signs of the zodiac dial wheel. Uh, obviously people don't live that long, but... Um, Essentially, Saturn is primarily uh, Saturn and Uranus. Uh, Uranus takes 84 years to go through a sign, so you'll have a Uranus return if you live long enough. But people have Saturn returns and stuff all the time. If you know a little bit about astrology or any of my astrology fans, they, they know what that is. And so, think of the kind of intense struggles that go on during a Saturn transit or Saturn return. So, Pluto. Um, Pluto is like the global or um, huge collective uh, return of a Saturn return for for everybody and um, because you had twice as long to figure it out and because there's so much energy actually being you know collectively you know contributed to it the bite and the repercussions of whatever the hell you did wrong is way more substantial and I'm not even saying that this is a this is a fair assessment more or less in the present time what's going on because we have some other aspects that are making it a lot worse so this is probably one of the worst Pluto returns that um, anybody could probably, you know, reference in in recent history time that we could, you know, actually find records of and people be willing to read it. But so a very costly and traumatizing Pluto return lesson for the USA today. Neptune in Pisces, which is going on, it's been going on since 2011 and it'll continue on until 2024. Uh, it's an ongoing transit and the ruler or lord of the ages. So. Anybody who, you know, is familiar with some of the Bible quotes or whatever like that, they talk about the, the coming of the ages or the coming of the eon or, you know, Satan or will rule the world for 2,000 years. 2,000 years, um, it's a little bit longer than that, but 2,000 years roughly is an age. And that's supposed to be breaking down of the great collective years. Um, I'm not going to go too far into that because that's a whole other lesson that could take forever. But um, essentially, the... The uh, current age that we're in is supposed to be associated with Pisces. So, aka Pisces re is represented by the two fish symbolism. Two fish, Jesus, we remember that one. Jupiter is essentially the um, ancient ruler for that. Ancient ruler, I mean like medieval astrology, so that, that was like back in ancient Greece. And uh, so, it's the son of God, and so the original God, if you look back even to Greek mythology, was Saturn. So it, the personification of the separ of separating Jesus from his father in heaven is an allegory of the detachment of enlightenment. So, in like internal wisdom, connection, and understanding of our origins, not just on a mundane level or mortal level, but just beyond that as well, are the progress therein, the existence uh, uh, in our existence in life and death. And now the unintended repercussions of that willful ignorance, because yes, 
some people are intentionally, you know, a part of the reason why a lot of information gets suppressed. But think of the ones that are intentionally suppressing it. It is willful ignorance. And it's the people who don't know the difference that are actually being um, conditioned from birth in, in certain, you know, social norms and secular societies to, uh, you know, basically conform or, you know, uh, adopt certain things and reject certain things. And then they're just basically being, you know, either behind the scenes or direct, uh, you know, repercussions or, you know, um, yeah, cond condemnations uh, for it being one of those people who is um, one of the special in insightful intuitive types that knows actually what really is going on. Old souls. So, um, yeah, and now for the unintended repercussions of that willful ignorance. It has brought us to Revelations, the estimated time frame of Revelations. In astrological terms, that equates to the Uranus-Pluto square. So, even if people that aren't very thorough with mundane astrology or astrology in general, if you look up anything about astrology, even on a Google search, Uranus-Pluto square is one of the, m the most, uh, like, uh, rumored and talked about transits that's happened in recent times. It's very uh, traumatizing. Um, I could, again, go on like an hour plus rant of uh, giving you actual um, sociological events and, and things that have happened from 2008 to, uh, quote unquote, it ended in 2015, but um, uh, that kind of signature will, will last generations, decades. Um, yeah, I could give you all kinds of things. It's very traumatizing. Usually, uh, war, um, you know, yeah, mass slaughter, annihilation, that sort of thing, earthquakes, uh, fireballs falling from the sky, volcanic eruptions, um, the um, radiation in the ocean now, toxic foods, all blah, 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 blah. Um, terrorism, all that. Um, so the Uranus-Pluto square, energy triggering environmental chaos, destruction of, in all facets upon the Earth, influencing the cohesive premeditated actions of the most wicked of humanity existing today. The second coming of Jesus... And, yeah, of course, uh, this is a disclaimer. This is where anybody who is, quote-unquote, you know, um, you know, uh, I guess a hardcore, you know, Christian or something, is, I'm going to lose you here, and that's okay. Whatever. Um, you'll learn on your own one way or not. Um, the second coming of Jesus is a cryptic allegory for the reincarnation of an entire generation of old souls whom, whom are gifted with intuition to recognize the origins of, of this hell on earth in the making and which I already think it's here but I mean I'm gonna at least give it the benefit of the doubt I guess and the Akashic awareness to vocalize and show the collective masses the error of modern life destructive false teachers that's something that's quoted in the Bible as well and bring the true consciousness and knowledge back and just as the character Jesus was condemned and executed for nothing more than helping and guiding collective society, Socrates and Plato, which are both y notable um, Greek uh, philosophers, and everybody seems to forget the whole thing that they were actually put on trial in, and murdered for everything they said. They were only killed for what they said. So it, think about that. In, in society today, there's certain people, it, it, and it's obviously kind of like on the outskirts extremes now, because they're suppressing that yet again. Um, but uh, people say, wow, they had so much insight because they had the Pythagoras kind of enlightenment sort of thing. And uh, yeah, they were killed for talking. That's what I'm talking about, that. So there, I'm sure that there's many others that have been lost and destroyed throughout the page, of, uh, you know, the, through the page of history that have been intentionally destroyed, that died for the same reasons. Um, but silence will not save any of us anymore. It's not. Obviously, there's there's mass shootings going on all the time. You can't actually predict or, you know, uh, know if you're safe anywhere anymore. It, and it's not just, like, from violence. Like, your food's killing you. Your government's killing you. The things that, quote-unquote, are supposed to be helping you are killing you. The medical industry. Your food's not real food anymore. People are going to stab you and attack you for no reason. Uh, yeah. Um... That sort of thing. So, so, but the silence will not save anyone now, because that was why the Illuminati and you know secret societies and people trying to be cryptic essentially from the get go um, have tried to like, sh hey, 
I have something to tell you, but I can't really tell you, like, blatantly what it is, because I'm gonna get fucking burned at the stake if I do. You can't do that shit anymore, because it actually won't help. It hasn't been helping. Because they've been intentionally misleading people from any of those who have actually tried to secretly, like, you know, encode it and tell people things. And or they've destroyed those, or, yeah, they've been dumbing down society collectively, so nobody will actually understand that and do critical thinking enough to pick on pick up on that. So, as it's becoming evident of the unrelenting war that is being waged upon all of us, from nature, ourselves, the skies, and modern society as it thrives, from all the innocent casualties, destruction, and mayhem, we have reached a breaking point. Action must happen. It is the only hope for life on Earth, humanity, and the consciousness beyond. So, kind of stemming on the whole let food be thy medicine, um, funny that the Hippocratic Oath, which I, I would assume that, um, I, I didn't thoroughly look at all of the actual, um, three days of this conference yet, because it's substantial, uh, speakers there, but there are some actual clinical phys physicians, biochemists, engineers, and health professionals, and from the ones I did see, they look like that they were actually born, like, into the, you know, the 40s, 50s, some of them maybe even, before, I don't know, no, uh, no, 40s, 50s, 60s, and that would actually be, um, a lot of people who were in the Uranus-Pluto conjunction generation, which again, that's another generational signature, that's supposed to bring about evolutionary change, and they essentially are living at this moment now, um, you know, pushing their second sign of return, to then now voice this evolutionary change that they've they've given they've been given insight to, to then uh, basically get the 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 hell the the hellbreakers and the heathens more or less. I don't say that in a bad way, but like people like me that are willing to like, do you want to fight about it? You want to fight about it? I'm willing to get in somebody's face and fucking tell them that this is how it needs to be. They're not like that. They need like the fighting spirit of, yeah, more my generation. <laughs> And so now is the time for them to actually, uh, you know, the damage has already been done, the repercussions have already been done, so there's obviously no use in warning people ahead of time. I try to struggle with, you know, accepting that all the time because it never works. It never works. It's just showing them what happened afterwards. I said, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? And hope that maybe they'll listen at some point. That's the exact kind of thing that's going on now. We have a huge, um, you know, health epidemic and crisis in the United States. Uh, specifically with obesity and, and diabetes and it's been primarily you, you know statistically shown and there's plenty of evidence thereof which is what I love about this conference this conference specifically has all these professionals and some of them that obviously went to medical school a long time ago before they actually started stripping out that Hippocrates was actually an astrologer astronomer astrologer same fucking thing um, at least back then um, it, and, and a doctor and the you know that's been slowly stripped out of things and I even have you know there's some people that are like mm, more into the late 90s generation they were born so you know they're they're basically college age right now um, they I've, I've gone rounds and actually had arguments with them saying that they didn't learn anything about Hippocrates in in med school or any of their pre-med classes and that he was not an astrologer and that I'm full of shit and I'm pulling that out of my ass. And I'm like, really? The Hippocratic Oath? Let food be thy medicine? Really? Don't ever trust a doctor who's not a good astrologer? Like, I'm like, yep, there goes that continuation of suppressing collective society, trauma signature, suppressing the true knowledge yet again. Yep. Yep. And the awesome thing about this um, this organization is that not only does it have you know a a strong a co coalition of voices that I I actually was listening to some of the actual uh, speakers and one of them actually directly mentioned Plato. Now this is not a metaphysical like conference. This is not an astrology conference or anything like that. Or it, this is just strictly on nutrition. I'm like, oh my god! As soon as I heard that, I'm like, oh my god! It's like paused it and like went and told Boo like oh my god they're talking about Plato in this thing like seriously I'm like there's fucking there's fucking hope there's hope there's hope and um yeah time out 
<laughs> and <laughs> I'm just gonna insert actually, um, at least when I recorded some of the actual discussion or whatever, um, that sound quality wasn't too bad because I put my speaker like right up to my phone. So I'll just uh, insert those into this and uh, just do some text over it for astrological equivalents to some of the things that were said and highlights and and you know influences and stuff instead of continuing to meander because I know that I can I, I could easily just continue to meander and yeah this is a an unfinished thought obviously and to be continued probably way longer than I ever need to thank you the information on how to access the live stream which is running right now and I want to say hello to everybody out there watching the live stream and again, I've seen the map, and it is truly global. This was started not only during the mutable years, but, um, which all of the, all of those have to do with, um, Virgo diet, and then obviously the repercussions of your diet and mostly healthy lifestyle, and Ju Jupiter, Sagittarius has to do with uh, discernment and knowledge of what to know, the, you know, for overall wellness and everything. It's fascinating. So just uh, on a sur astro sociological level, uh, three years ago we had Jupiter in Virgo squaring Neptune Pisces, and Neptune Pisces. That's obviously Pisces is the sign that rules Neptune or whatever. Neptune rules Pisces, and um, that has to do with self undoing and chronic disease. Not disease like with the eighth house, but with um, terminal, and it's usually. Um, all terminal chronic things are usually uh, the repercussions or results of lifestyle choices. So Jupiter being in Virgo, even though that's the detriment in most cases um, on on you know mundane levels, uh, in in this case, um, th these individuals uh, kind of jumped on the bandwagon with the cardinal years, which we're now in, um, and decided to take an initiative, and instead of um, falling prey to the Neptune Pisces. Um, kind of, uh, you know, influences, which it would overall be the the uh, outcome for that transit. They decided to use the knowledge from a Virgo perspective, which is diet and healthy daily lifestyles, uh, to combat the Neptune and Pisces themes that people are um, experiencing, yeah, all over the United and States and, and will continue to get worse in the next 10 years. You know, this year in bio, we lost 150 people, and so last year, here in Brest, we got 350, and this year we're over the 300, and the live stream has grown uh, exponential. It's fantastic. So that coincides with um, Neptune uh, being associated with the global sort of thing, and I did emphasize even in some of my sociological predictions that uh, the the opposition between Neptune and Pisces and Jupiter and Virgo is going to cause people to be uh, very um, invested in bleeding hearts for global um, uh, kind of like organizations or co-ops. Co Think of taking the knowledge of having a healthy diet and being in not only cardinal years but it being ruled by Capricorn. Capricorn's all about discipline and, you know, um, restraint and limiting or rationing things, conservatism. This low carb break is all about um, rationing and conserving uh, carbs because they're toxic. And it's also about um, being proactive. Conference that's the public health um, col collab it's col collaboration. I keep wanting to call it coalition. So with the public health collaboration USA, which I invite you to be a part of. I'm grateful to Ivor Cummins, Jeff Gerber, Nina Teichholz, and so many others who are here and in, and in other parts of the country from Maine to California and around the globe. We established the uh, Public Health Collaboration USA to be part of the greater global collaboration going on in different parts of the world, like in the UK, where great work has already been done under the leadership of Sam Feltham and doctors like David Unwin and, and Asim Malhotra. So we look forward to supporting and collaborating with all the other PHCs that are being formed and established around the planet. We have just a very simple core mission, better health, nutrition, and health care for the chronically ill. So that goes back to the 
um, Jupiter and Virgo op opposition with Neptune and Pisces, and we also have Pluto in Capricorn sextile to that that Neptune in Pisces as well. And Pluto does represent disease, but it also represents transformation. And it being in Capricorn would represent the government, the plutocracy, or the the uh, more or less the actual um, food regulation sort of people. And then still with Uranus in and Aries can and Uranus and Aries and it conjunct with Eris at this moment actually of this discussion uh, for uh, what's going on right now, the speakers of this day, we have a prominent Uranus signature on the Midhaven. Our mission is to educate, empower, advocate, work with, and inform the public, industry, and government policy makers on the critical public health information uh, regarding the goals of metabolic health focusing on two clinical endpoints, healthy insulin and low inflammation. Our country is in the midst of a diabetes and obesity crisis that presents a genuine threat to the personal, economic, and national security of our country. So right now with us having Uranus in, uh, in Aries and, and Eris in Aries, um, it's not an exact square anymore per se, but the Uranus-Pluto square, while Pluto's been in Capricorn, um, we're having residual signatures with that yet again, and primarily what that's actually causing, um, we actually have the Hades midpoint in Cancer as well, so it's actually causing a T-square. So it's, uh, you know, bringing out the origin of quote-unquote potential, um, you know, trauma, trauma signatures because Uranus and Aries issues with, of the self, primarily perpetuated by Pluto and Capricorn, which is the community establishment we see this possible through the variations of low-carbohydrate nutrition that we know as low-carb, keto, zero-carb, carnivore. For those who only want to eat plant-based foods, low-carbohydrate is even possible there. This dietary approach can be summed up like this. No sugar, no grains, and no vegetable oils. Do not ascribe to the flawed cholesterol diet hypothesis that has governed the flawed dietary guidelines that do not work, that did not work for those of us here who are on the front lines, and has only helped make millions of human beings across the planet fat, sick, obese, diabetic, and chronically ill. Fascinatingly enough, when we have the North Node in Leo as of right now, conjunct with Ceres, that's the way that you heal yourself. Ceres is also associated with agriculture and nutrition and healing myself through actual food, food be thy medicine, as Socrates and Hippocrates have been quoted. Um, so it's a it's fascinating emphasis that that's what's going on here as well. So our immediate goals will be to change the dietary guidelines and support the ongoing efforts of groups seeking to change those guidelines. The cornerstone of metabolic health can be summed in this statement, know and respect your insulin. We are opposed to a one diet for all approach or a diet that is centered around an ideology that disregards science or seeks to impose its will on all of humanity. There's that Uranus and Aries thing again. We want people to make choices about their nutrition based upon their understanding of their own respective individual health and experiences eating certain foods and in the differing stages of their lives. So as we move forward, we have a message for various audiences. To those of you in government, we will work with you to show you how you can lower the cost of managing and reversing obesity and diabetes care through the power of nutrition. We will advocate making the necessary policy changes to support these reforms. One thing I'd like to mention, and I've mentioned this before in some of my astrosociological videos, the um, Uranus-Pluto conjunction in the 60s with President Kennedy emphasizing on FDA regulations, et cetera, et cetera. Since we're now uh, experiencing the Uranus-Pluto square, we're uh, experiencing the aftermath or the things that perhaps failed or the paths that were, you know, paved with good intentions that have steered us obviously in the wrong direction to now be corrected and reversed. And this individual actually is a great um, indicator of the residual astral projection reincarnated signature of that need to actually rectify and help people be healthy. Governors and elected officials who are struggling now figuring out how to manage and pay for obesity and diabetes related care 
for their constituents and voters. We will work with you to bring your health care expenditures under control and have a healthier constituency back contributing to your states and your districts. And that is huge as well with Saturn and Capricorn because we are actually in, in the process of tanking uh, like collectively as a country on the deficits primarily because of the overwhelming um, costs of health care and this yeah, diabetes epidemic. To those of you in the food industry, we have a very straightforward message. Get the added sugar out of our foods. Yep. Innovate and create foods that are grain-free, sugar-free, vegetable oil. Palace, get it out of our food, Uranus and Aries, and Aries. Be innovative, create new foods. Free. The scientific case has been made to explain how grains and highly processed foods, sugar and vegetable oil, prom can promote obesity and chronic disease. Yep, and since Ceres is in Leo, the opposing uh, polarity to that would be the 11th house of um, repercussions, trauma signature, or, you know, the future uh, inevitable, um, yeah, events that would transpire because of poor choices of the self. And so he is, yeah, uh, reiterating what needs to be done or else. We will work with the food industry to make the necessary regulatory reforms to allow and support these changes. We Think of this as well. Jupiter right now is in Scorpio, and that is associated with knowledge that's being brought out about disease, the medical industry, the plutocracy, the economy, the corporations, what he's uh, addressing right now, the food industry, and it's squaring with that North Node uh, in Ceres and Leo. He is uh, basically challenging or, you know, basically calling out the things that have been masked from the public. We will work and back food industries that contribute to metabolic health. We support the right to choose and have access to healthy meats in our diets. We want all of our food to be of high quality from the ranch or the farm to the store to the dining table. To those of you in the pharmaceutical industry, we challenge you to come up with cures. How many cures has pharma discovered and brought to market in the last three decades. They haven't. Let that question sit with That would be a, the Jupiter in Virgo, I mean, the Jupiter in Scorpio thing. Him revealing the real altruistic knowledge of the pharmaceutical industry has no um, intentions or no missions or goals to actually cure people with these pharmaceutical drugs that they create. Be for a while. And you don't even have to believe me on that. You can uh, witness that for yourself. Every single even, you know, uh, quick PSA or adver advert for a new prescription drug and you hear all those potential, you know, side effects and how they're actually, some of them are even worse than the actual ailment that you have to take the pill for. Yeah, um, they know that that's there. They say that because they don't want to be liable and get in trouble, basically lose money for you dying as a result of this. So they tell you ahead of time, so it's your fault, it's consumer beware. So that being said, just think of that on a motive and a psychological level. They are fully aware that there's all these substantial, you know, repercussions and negative effects and toxic things that will happen to you as a result of taking this that actually give you a multitude of health problems that are, you know, in comparison um, exacerbated or worse than what you're actually treating. So what does that say? And in the context of metabolic health, where we need focuses on solving the riddle of insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia and not come up with another diabetes or cholesterol drug of the month. Besides, Amen. who can afford the cost of these prescription drugs anymore? Again, there being an outlandish cost, it being actually burdened with the state and it being subsidized will just uh, try to force people to either get these expensive drugs or else. And this will also give um, the pharmaceutical industry a free fucking ride to continue to perpetuate and make these toxic things and if they basically um you know make everybody conform to the notion that they should accept all these drugs it's the confirmation bias psychological theory everybody and and the group think theory everybody's everybody does it therefore it must actually work no that's not how this works more we are opposed to the status quo and duality that exists between the pharmaceutical and food industry where 
It's the metabolic disease business model of producing foods that make us fat, sick, and diabetic, only to be put on drugs to be for treatment only for the duration of a lifetime. Just this model is yep. socially and economically unsustainable. Exactly, because the medications don't actually treat the disease. They just uh, basically suppress the immediate severe um, reactions that your body continually has as you continue to consume toxic food. To health professionals listening, we look forward to working with you to expand uh, therapeutic and metabolic nutrition education requirements. So one thing I'd like to point out as well, because of um, the current ongoing transits in this time period as a Pisces season 2018, a lot of people are going to start feeling um, conscious and, and guilt ridden and aware that what they're doing is screwed up and they need to you know, basically uh, reassess what, they, what they're what they contributing to in their lives. And since a lot of, regardless if they wanted to or not, uh, medical professionals and doctors have had their hands tied and almost forced with this, there will be a growing, um, you know, surge of people that will, will, that will join this PHC group, that will join this movement, and 2019 low-carb brick will be even larger than uh, they probably realize. And within three years from now, they'll probably double, if not triple, the actual audience of this, this low-carb brick thing. And that's primarily to do with Saturn and Capricorn. And when it conjuncts with Pluto in Capricorn and Jupiter goes into Capricorn as well, that will be when it'll spread n nationally. It's obviously a global effort, but that's when it'll be a, you need to do this or you're going to die and there's no ifs, ands, or buts. And that's actually why, personally for myself, I reject, and because I, I don't have the income, quote unquote, so I, I qualify for the free, you know, health care. I choose to not actually enroll, and I would rather treat myself through nutrition and through homeopathy than to go to doctors because I know that, that, that what they do is not a cure and will not help people. End rant.